Hi everyone, it's Stephanie with Wolf and Sheep, back with another fiber video. Today I started separating some Lester Long Wool Locks to wash, and I thought, well, I'll just bring you all along on this and show you how I do it. First of all, let me show you this gorgeous, gorgeous fleece. Look at this, look at the crimp in these locks. See this? Isn't this beautiful? This is why I wanted to preserve the individual locks in this fleece. Look at that crimp and the luster, the shine that's going to be on these once they're clean. You can, and this is a remarkably clean fleece. You can see some yellowing and you can see a little bit of, of dirt in here, but that's not that's not unusual at all. This is, it has very little vegetable matter, a little bit here, little twigs every once in a while, but nothing big at all. So I just thought I would bring you all along on this and share with you how I process individual locks when I am cleaning them. You see, you can tell some dirt right there. So the first thing I do is I just open up the fleece, okay? and I want it so that I can see, it's hard doing this one-handed, but what I want to be able to do is to see the individual ends of the locks. Here, look at this piece. You see right here, here are the ends of the locks. And what you're going to do is you're just going to separate those by pulling them out. And that's what I've done with, with these. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm probably going to use these in felting, making shawls and different things like that. Hold on just a second. I'm gonna try and set my camera up so that you can watch me do this. And I can have two hands. Just one second here. All right, so now I've got my hands, both hands free, and you can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. I'm going to separate out some individual locks, and I'm doing this so that I can keep this wonderful crimp and this wonderful texture intact, because I'm going to use these probably to make a shawl and to line the shawl. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to use them probably around the edge of a shawl or something like that that I felt with. Felting is wonderful because you can keep a lot of the locks intact and you can use them to add interest and texture to your piece. And I love that because again, it keeps us closer to the natural state of the fiber which I always enjoy doing. So I'm just going around the fleece right now, picking out several locks that I'd like to incorporate into my future designs. And I'm just pulling them out. Look at that one. Look how long that is. Isn't that gorgeous? Now there's a little bit of dirt here. No big deal. And you can see the yellowing here. That's caused by the lanolin. All of this yellowing that's in this fleece is because it's a very high lanolin content and it's going to make my hands really soft once I'm finished doing this. So I'm just going to go through here, pull out some locks, and then what you'll want to do is get a lingerie bag. Okay, you want the water to be able to move through, but you want the locks to be held relatively still while you're doing this. So what you're going to do, I've got some lingerie bags here. This is what I use. You see, it's, it's a bag, it's just a, a plain old lingerie bag that I got at Walmart. I think it was like $3 or something like that. And I'm going to pack the locks in here. I'm going to um, pack it pretty full so that they can't move around much. I don't want to lose this structure. I don't want the locks to turn into this.
because you see I've lost the structure from this. This is created just from pulling out different various locks and this particular lock just lost its structure. And this is what I don't want to happen while I'm cleaning this fleece. It's okay that it has happened. It's, you know, it's just part of it. You're not gonna be able to use every single part of this for lock spinning or felting. Look at all of this, isn't that beautiful? All of those locks. Oh, and by the way, I purchased this fleece from Namaste Farms. And as usual, it is beautiful, just gorgeous. Now I want to um, show you, this lock is a good example. You can tell which end is the end that was shorn or basically attached closest to the sheep and which is the end that was hanging down. You can see a bit of coloration difference. Look, this is whiter and this is yellower. Okay, also you can see this is the shorn end. It doesn't have the same little tiny curls that these that this end does. Okay, I hope you can see that. So that's one way you can tell which end is which. Okay, so I think I have enough now to fill one lingerie bag. So what I'm going to do is just, I've separated out all of my locks here on this towel. So what I'm going to do is just gather them up and start filling the bag. I won't make you watch this whole process here, but basically I just, I have a handful like this and I'm going to lay them gently in the bag and sort of spreading them out so that they are in a single layer. I don't want a double layer here because I don't want to risk any felting. And I'm just, lining them up in the bag. And I might actually be able to get more in this bag than I originally thought. And you can, if you'd like, you can loosely get some string and tie them together if you would like. But I've found that if you do that, you're not getting every bit of the lock clean. Um, so I like to have them loose like this in the bag. See, and I've still got some room in here, so I'm going to separate out some more locks. And as soon as I do that, we will take this fleece over to the sink and start washing. Okay, so I have my lingerie bag filled here with the fleece, or with the locks, I should say. And I have my sink full of hot water. This time I'm using hot water instead of my um, cold water rinse and repeat. You can find that in another video, which I will link up above here. But I've got my sink full of hot water and I'm using this Unicorn Power Scour to get rid of the lanolin. I've also used plain Dawn dishwashing detergent and I've used Namaste Farms Dirty Rotten Bastard. So I'm going to just gently very gently push the lingerie bag into the sink and I'm going to let it sit here and soak for probably about 15 or 20 minutes and then I'll come back and check it and see where we're at. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and I have drained the water and put in fresh water but I just wanted to stop for a minute and show you what already, how much brighter and whiter the locks are. This is how they started, okay? And just a 20 minutes of soaking, no agitation, no squeezing the soap through the fiber or anything. This is the nice bright white that we're getting right now. Much different than the way they started, which is here. So what I've done is I have just let the dirty water drain out and put in clean, hot water. And I'm going to let this soak for about another 20 minutes and then it will probably be finished. So we will be back and check then. So we're still soaking, but I just wanted to pop in here for a minute and show you the difference. 
this is the bag that we started with. These are the locks we started with. And these are locks I just put in at the same time I started the second soak on this. So you can see the difference in just a little hot water and unicorn scour. This is all of the dirt that we're getting out of here. And in just one rinse or one soak, this is what we've come up with. Look, the water is, there's still a little bit of lanolin in there, but it's nothing like it was. This one, however, it's just dirt all the way through. That's the water there. So I just thought that was interesting to show you a side by side after just 20 minutes of soaking what this one has ended up with. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, so we finished washing our locks and now I have them spread out on this towel in my bathtub to air dry. I would normally put any fleece or yarn that I was dyeing and then um, letting dry. I would normally put it through my little spin dry machine, but I don't want to do that with these locks. I'm being extra careful with them because they are so delicate and because I am trying to preserve the lock structure. So that's why I'm leaving them in the bags and I'm just going to let them dry in here and I will come back when they're finished drying and show you what they look like in the end. All right, it is the next day. I've let the locks dry overnight and I've pulled out a few to show you. Look at how nice and clean and white they are. And look at those, those beautiful locks. Look at those crimps, that crimp that's in the lock. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Now, I wanna point out something that I would do differently next time. You see how we've got some that are not, that didn't keep the structure as well. I think I packed the bags a little bit too full. And so when I was rinsing everything, the locks kind of clumped together. And so when I separated them, it pulled out a little bit of this fuzzy part. So what I'll do next time is I would not pack the bags as full as I did so that I have more that are like, like these up here without the fuzzy parts that these down here have. So that's what I would do differently next time. And I hope this video was helpful to you. If, you, if it was, please like and subscribe. And until next time, I'm Stephanie with Wolf and Sheep. Thanks for watching.